In this video, we examine the effect of the conditions on equilibrium constants. All right, so uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at uh, whether a catalyst changes an equilibrium constant and whether temperature affects uh, the value of that equilibrium constant. All right, so let's start with the effect of a catalyst then on an equilibrium constant. Uh, what I have here is just an equilibrium that uh, will be reversible uh, and this is just a simple process. It could be an isomerization like C strands uh, between two isomers of the same species. All right, so we can write here the equilibrium constant for that process. So A and B are both solutes in uh, an ideal dilute solution. So that equilibrium constant is just going to be the concentration of B at equilibrium divided over the reference concentration over the concentration of A at equilibrium divided over the reference concentration and most people tend to write this just as the ratio of the concentration of products over the concentration of reagents. All right, so then the goal now is to try to see what happens when you add a catalyst to this reaction. All right, so we have to come up with uh, an alternative mechanism for this process, so maybe this isomerization is quite slow, right? So you want to add a catalyst to speed it up. Right, so, so maybe the idea then is that uh, you have here this uh, A, and everything is going to be in the aqueous phase, and then what you do is you add a catalyst, and uh, what that does is perhaps generates a complex between uh, these species and the catalyst, and then that complex may dissociate into products uh, B, and then the catalyst is regenerated. Now, this is not how all catalytic processes take place. This is just an idealized uh, catalytic mechanism just to show uh, what the effect of the catalyst would be. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I would actually what you do here is, is realize that uh, your overall reaction would be C plus A to generate B plus C, right? So the catalyst really is not part of the overall reaction, right? The overall reaction is still A to give B, and that is the definition of a catalyst. It's, it's a substance that uh, makes a reaction go faster without it itself being consumed or generated in the reaction. All right, so notice that the equilibrium constant then, when you write this equilibrium constant for that process, right, the catalyst does not appear as part of the overall process, so the equilibrium constant is going to be exactly the same, right? That is still going to be concentration of B over concentration of A, and again, that is because the catalyst is not part of the overall reaction. Okay, so a catalyst will not affect the equilibrium constant. The only thing that the catalyst does it affects how quickly you reach equilibrium. Okay, so let's try to uh, e uh, examine that using this concentration versus time uh, diagram that uh, we're borrowing from an earlier video. Right, so here we have the same reaction A to give B, and we have started it with uh, uh, all A and no B. Right, so we'll let the reaction go by and eventually you reach equilibrium and the concentrations of B and A no longer change in time. Right? So the effect of a catalyst would simply be to speed up this process without changing uh, the equilibrium constant. So the way that that looks is as follows. Right? So uh, the position of equilibrium is going to be exactly the same, which would be this one. Right? That is the position of equilibrium. But then what the catalyst does is actually makes it reach faster. All right, so uh, that will be the case where now, uh, notice that you're reaching equilibrium way earlier than you did before, right? So again, the position of equilibrium doesn't change. Okay, you just reach it faster, right? So that turns over really quickly. All right, so now the position of equilibrium has been reached perhaps at this time uh, instead of that time, right? So, so again, you get to the end of uh, uh, your reaction earlier with a catalyst. Okay, so uh, that is the effect of catalyst. The second uh, effect that we're going to study in this video is the effect of temperature. And we're going to do it at a qualitative level in this video, and in the next video we'll do it uh, at a quantitative level. Okay, so um, to examine the effect of uh, temperature on an equilibrium constant or an a chemical equilibrium, we actually, that is going to be tied 
to whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So I'm going to write energy diagrams for both cases and then examine how an increase in temperature will change the equilibrium constant. Let's draw first an exothermic reaction. Okay, so this is a diagram where you just uh, track the enthalpy as a function of the reaction of coordinates. And the reaction coordinate is simply something that indicates progress from reagents to products. Okay, so if the reaction is exothermic, here you will have A, and here you will have B, right? B has lower enthalpy than A, and that means that delta H for the reaction will be negative. Okay, now we can connect this A and B whichever way we want. Uh, what happens in the middle is the body of kinetics, not thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is only about the initial state and the final state, okay? Not how quickly you go between it. Okay, so now what we actually then do is say, well, the equilibrium constant for this particular equilibrium is still the concentration of B divided over the uh, standard concentration uh, over the concentration of A divided over the standard concentration. Now, the question is whether this value is affected at all by temperature. All right, so now what we're going to do is elevate the temperature in this exothermic reaction. Now, uh, a way to visualize the effect of uh, the change in temperature to the green constant is to invoke uh, the Le Chatelier principle. And this is something that we explain in general chemistry. So here is the Le Chatelier principle. Uh, an equilibrium, uh, when it undergoes a disturbance, uh, readjusts itself to minimize the effect of that disturbance. Okay, so in this particular case, the disturbance is that we have elevated the temperature, right? So there's more energy around than you did before at a lower temperature. So the equilibrium can readjust itself to minimize the effect of that higher temperature, that uh, excess of thermal energy. So there's two ways that it can actually go, right? You can, you can uh, produce more product and reagent or go back and uh, regenerate some reagent from the product. The question is which one of those two paths, right, left to right or right to left, tends to minimize the excess of thermal energy that you have introduced when you have elevated the temperature. Okay, so well, if you go left to right, notice that what you're doing is that is exothermic, right? So you're actually providing more energy to the median uh, than you did before. Uh, but if it's endothermic, then what you're actually doing is you're absorbing energy of the medium, right, or from the medium. So then the idea here is that if you want to minimize the excess of thermal energy that you have introduced by elevating the temperature, you would like to absorb some of that excess thermal energy, right? And that means that the uh, progress then, or the equilibrium is going to be shifting so that you consume some of the product that you had and go back to reagents because that's the direction in which you, uh, again, absorb some of the excess energy that you have in the medium. Right, so what's going to happen to the equilibrium constant when you elevate the temperature, right? So if the temperature goes up, then what happens to the equilibrium constant is that uh, if the reaction is exothermic, right, you move uh, left to right, you move in the endothermic direction. That means that the uh, concentration of B becomes a little bit lower, and the concentration of A becomes greater, right? So that number is smaller, that number is greater, so that means that for an exothermic reaction then, the equilibrium constant will go down if you elevate the temperature. Okay, so uh, we will just examine what happens if the reaction was endothermic, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, so if the reaction is exothermic, endothermic, sorry, uh, the only thing that changes here is the location of uh, B, uh, which in this case is going to be above uh, a reagent, right? So again, uh, here you have to supply some energy as heat in order to make the reaction happen. That would be your endothermic process. Now we're going to sketch what happens in the middle, but again, that's not what thermodynamics does for you, that is kinetics. All right, so in this particular case, if you elevate the temperature, uh, the way to minimize that disturbance is to absorb that energy, right? So then uh, the idea is that you're going to be promoting the equilibrium from left to right, because that's the endothermic uh, direction. That's how you absorb that excess energy that you have uh, uh, put in place by elevating the temperature, right? So uh, this is for an exothermic process, right? For an endothermic process, 
from left to right, then if you elevate the temperature, again, you're going to be producing more product, so this number increases, that number decreases, and the equilibrium constant then increases. Okay? All right, so in this video, we have uh, examined two effects uh, on the equilibrium constant. First, we have seen that a catalyst does not change uh, the equilibrium constant at all. It is, uh, uh, allows for the equilibrium to be reached faster. Then we have examined the effect of temperature uh, invoking the Tetelier principle. And we have seen that whether the uh, equilibrium constant increases or decreases with increasing temperature, depends on whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. In the next video, then we were, we're going to work out uh, uh, some formalism to predict exactly how much does the equilibrium constant change for a given change in temperature.